Now that we have a basic Simon effect experiment, we can set up the data analysis. We went over the basics of the analysis window in a previous tutorial. Recall that the data processing was controlled by the file experiment1sdf, which was created when we created our experiment using the quick start feature. We will now make our own file for this experiment to show how it is done. Select New File from the Editor menu and then save the file with the other experiment files. The file extension used is SDF, which stands for Set Definition File. We refer to the format of these files also as SDF. SDF is not a programming language. SDF is a way to define event sets, event pair sets, numbers, tables and the contents of an optional output file. Next we can tell Presentation to use this new file for the experiment by selecting Set Experiment SDF File from the Editor menu. To see the effects of this, view the Log Files panel on the Settings tab of the main presentation window. Here we see the file name of our new file set as the Set Definition File. We could have set this up simply by typing here or using the File Browse dialog. Running the scenario again, the new file will be used. Since the file is empty, we just see the items that are set up for us automatically, the set of all events, the event pair sets created by the response matching features, and the default tables. If you ran the scenario with practice trials, you will notice that there is nothing explicit that distinguishes the practice trial events from the main trial events. Before proceeding, we will add some information to the event codes of the stimuli to make this easier. Because both the practice and the main trials are run by the same subroutine, we can add another argument to it, a string that we will add to our event codes. We can use the argument where we set the event code. Finally, we will need to add the argument each time we call the subroutine. Now let's run the scenario and take a look at the data. We have now set up the event codes to have the following information. The block type, practice or main, the color, red or blue, and the position, left or right. However, this information all resides in one long string. In order to treat these properties independently, we need to give presentation some information about what's in the stimulus event code. This is done using a pair of header parameters. The first is event code delimiter, which gives the delimiter used in the event codes as a string. We are using semicolons here, so assign this to that parameter. The second parameter, stimulus properties, gives a name to each item inside the code along with a type. The format of the value is a list of the names where each name is followed by a type designation, which must be either string or number. Note that neither the names nor the type designations appear inside quotation marks. Therefore, the names may not contain spaces. We must rerun the scenario so that the changes we have just made will be a part of the data. Defining the stimulus properties header parameter will automatically generate additional columns in the general event list in the log file. However, we cannot automatically see this in the analysis window because the default tables do not use our stimulus properties. The default tables display standard properties such as code and time, which are always available. You can view a list of standard properties in the analysis features section of the documentation. The names you use in the definition of stimulus properties add new properties that are available when analysing data from that scenario. Let's start by creating a way to view the event codes for the stimuli in separate columns. To do so, we can define an event table that includes the stimulus property names. An event table definition consists of typing event table and then the name of the event table you wish to create. A list of the properties to be displayed follows in parentheses. 
For now, let's just include the block, colour, position and time. Note that in SDF you do not end lines with a semicolon. Instead, a new line is what indicates the end of a definition. But we can press Ctrl R or use the Analyzer menu to reanalyze the data. Using our new table, we can view the stimulus data separated into columns. However, there are also lines with only times. Going back to the default event table, we see that these are the responses. To only view stimuli or responses, we can define sets to contain only those events. To define a set, enter a name for the set followed by a colon, and then a conditional which is satisfied by all events in the set. Conditional expressions may include property names, set names, strings, and numbers combined with comparison, logical, and numerical operators. For responses, we can use the event type property, which we see as response for response events. We can now reanalyze and see that our new event set appears in the event set list. We can use the same approach for the set of stimuli. In our scenario, all stimuli were picture stimuli. However, in another experiment where there are also auditory stimuli, we could use a compound conditional to include both. The use of parentheses in conditionals is optional. In these set definitions, all events are considered for membership. You may also optionally specify a superset for a new set, meaning that the new set must be a subset of a given set. To do this, place the superset name in parentheses following the new set name. When a previously defined set name is used in a conditional, it evaluates to true for events that are in that set. As an example, we could define the set sound as events in stimulus that are not in set picture. In our experiment, all the stimuli are picture stimuli, so we can keep things simple. We can click on the stimulus set and the custom table event table to see only the stimuli in the table we created. In the next tutorial, we will continue the analysis by considering event pair sets.